Hi everybody, I'm Mary Carrillo and you're Inside Tennis with the Kaz, the legend. And you will sit down with sportscaster Superwoman and former French Open mixed doubles champion with John McEnroe. The legendary Mary Carrillo. Catching up with Mary Carrillo. Always Mary. A pleasure, <laughs> Pleasure's mine, and you know that. First time we met on air, we're chatting about. Oh, Wait, the how long ago were we uh, talking about? A number of good years, Mary, <laughs> a number of good years. Oh, no, no, no. Well, the question was, Mary, we know how much fun you had on Court Central with John playing mixed doubles, John McEnroe. Yep. How much fun were you having in the booth at the US Open? And you politely said, what? Well, we had more fun on the court playing, <laughs> and he really didn't know about women taking over in men's tennis. <laughs> Two weeks later, I talked to him. John, we know how you feel about women calling men's matches. Yes. Have you ever called a, a woman's match, and will you ever? I haven't. Will I ever? I don't know. But I know what it's like being in the delivery room with six kids, but I don't know what it's like delivering a baby. What was I going to say to that? That says it all, John. That's Mary. What you said. <laughs> That's all I could say. Yeah. Mary, you said it wasn't great, but you knew it was going to get better and well. No. How much better has it gotten? No, you can't get any better. It's, it's, and by the way, John McEnroe, cause, uh, he, came, he started being in the booth just around the time that Venus Williams and Serena Williams showed up, and they became such great stories that John was more than happy to start calling women's tennis matches. And it's been, I still work with John. We still, we, we've been working here at the US Open for Amazon Prime UK. I work with him at the French Open for NBC. When you sit next to John McEnroe, you got a pretty good seat. <laughs> well, your seat's not so bad either that you bring. Well, you bring something. The smile, the voice <laughs> are the trademark of female broadcast. Well, your smile and your voice are pretty famous around here on the men's side, Well, too. you bring it out, Mary. Come on, stop. But, uh, Mary, when you say something, the voice itself commands respect. We know you know your stuff. How blessed are you to have that beautiful voice? No, I'm, I've had it for a while now. I've always kind of, <laughs> I've always kind of sounded like this. I've been in... Uh, darkened movie theaters where I'll just say I'll talk you know they're still in you know previews and I'll say something and somebody in the dark will say hey aren't you Mary Carrillo <laughs> they can hear they just from my voice so it's been good it's it's gotten me around uh, and I hope I get to to keep using my voice for a long while. This has been a spectacular U.S. Open in terms of story storylines. Haven't you been busy? I have been busy. I'll bet. Uh, tracking down what you're covering an hour before I got it, so it, <laughs> it, is, it is fun. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And I want to talk to you about the Open, but you brought up something, the movies. You were on the big screen yourself. <laughs> <laughs> How cool was that and what was that like? And have you ever spent more time getting ready for two minutes of delivery? <laughs> I was in a movie called Wimbledon um, and it came out a bunch of years ago and I was only supposed to be in one scene and so great. So I, I did my thing. I was interviewing the guy who ends up, you know, in the final of Wimbledon, the, like the journeyman. And then half a year later, uh, the production company for that movie called me back and said, we've changed the script, we need you back again for a second scene. And I said, um, okay, but you know, I'm back in this day. I wasn't, they flew me to England. My hair had changed. It was, it wasn't as, I think it was shorter or longer or it's a different color. So they colored my hair and gave my, just for continuity, because you didn't want to look totally different, you know, let's face it, Wimbledon only lasts two weeks. So I could, I, I wasn't allowed to change my looks that much, and I shot a second scene, and I absolutely enjoyed it, yeah. And, and it still airs, it, it's a, I don't think it made that big a deal in the States, but in, in Great Britain, during Wimbledon, it's, it's on all the time. It's all right, fun. Right behind us, a man who gave it to everyone in broadcast, you and I, were at the, the colony down in Sarasota, yeah. I introduced you. What an honor that was, Mary. 
You were introduced. That. Oh boy, that was a great night. A yeah. great night. And in the background, it was I Will Survive, which was a segue for me to interview Bud Collins yes. because he was fighting the colon cancer back then. But Mary, what has Bud given you that you will never stop giving your your guests and your audiences? Well, I, honestly, I, got, I was lucky because uh, I got to work with Bud on a couple of different networks for many years. And as great an authority as he was, I mean, he was the guy we always looked for when we needed a, a fact or some historical knowledge or whatever. He, he did this job with a sense of joy and playfulness that really rubbed off on me. I find myself now uh, trying so hard to have the same attitude when I cover matches that Bud did because he really, not only did he enjoy the sport, he liked the players, he liked the moment, he un and he gave players and, and the rest of us a sense of where this falls in the grand scheme of things. So I, I, every time I step in the booth, I can honestly say that I think of Bud and what he would make of all this. There are times when I would get really angry at, at a player or at the ATP or something, and Bud would just have this sort of kind smile, and he would know that, all right, this is going to change. The world is just going to keep making it spin around the sun, and this will all pass. And I learned, I learned that lesson from him. And again, just he wasn't he fun to have around? Oh, and you felt man. as soon as Bud Collins walked into um, the press room, no matter where it was, you felt like the occasion was bigger. You felt like the tournament was bigger, that the match meant more because Bud Collins was there calling it. A beautiful man indeed. Yeah. I thought you were coordinating the wardrobe after Bud today. A lot of nice passion uh, pastels today, passion uh, pastels. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very, very nice. HBO, Hallmark, you do it all. You get into the Olympics, you mix the sports. How big of a thrill is it to be covering all these sports? And you know them. You do your homework, Carrillo. I, d I do my homework, but honestly, because the only sport I'm fluent in is tennis. Um, all the other stuff, I don't have to be the expert, which is a very good thing, because when you're covering... Your voice carries it, though, Mary, <laughs> you know that. Well, no, it, I, I mean, it, I, storytelling, that's what... I think that's what so many of us here want to do. We want to tell stories, and we like the athletic heart, and we want to figure out how it beats and you know why people can come from nowhere and make it all the way to the top or you know I mean there there are so many things that engage us right when we're at, at a tennis room it's not just how the match goes it's it's all that other stuff that makes it so much fun uh, indeed it is your favorite charity you do so many of those Mary ah uh, there's a lot I mean I I try to be uh, as busy as possible normally anything that is attached to Billie Jean King I'll, I'll try to be a part of, you know, whether it's the Women's Sports Foundation or any, or any of her many charities. There's so many good people who do good work. Andy Roddick has become a favorite of mine. I got to do something with, with Andy and, and Roger Fetter last fall for his charity. I mean, he does so much work uh, for underserved kids back in Austin, Texas. Uh, Roger Fetter, uh, we, we are blessed that so many tennis players really do care and give back so anytime I can be uh, a small part of that or uh, you know give my my money or my services to them Chris Everett's got an amazing charity she's raised, raised over 20 million dollars you know her annual event we're lucky oh we are we're, we're we really are. lucky we aren't are. we oh we are and Roddick we know he can cry because he cried when he won the slam here but he cries at his foundation every year when he talks about those kids. Oh, he really means it. I, I love Andy, and I, I, what I really respect, and he's the last American man to win a singles major, as we all, as we all know, and it was here back in 2003. So I'd love for somebody else to come along. But what I always admired most about Andy Roddick is he won this. He won his first major. He was only 21 years old. He never won another one, but he spent the rest of his career trying to get better. Mm. Trying to, and he always worked hard, and he had a number of really good coaches. All he wanted to do was get better, and that's why when you could nominate him for the Hall of Fame. You were ball, there. Oh, I, he got my vote. He got just for Davis Cup and everything else he's done. And, and uh, yeah, so, again, Andy, they, so many of these players do terrific work. U.S. Open time, 2019. Many slats. Take it in some directions, Mary. 
Uh, in terms of in terms of the storylines here, story into, lines. oh man, I mean for me, it's we're we're into the men's quarterfinals. I think Rafa Nadal has got a terrific chance to win his second major of the year, and that would get him within just one, right? of Roger Federer's 20 titles. I mean, that's he's never been as close as he is now to getting close to Roger. Um, that, to me, is a huge storyline on the women's side. Obviously, Serena trying to win this thing. She's been in three major finals since she had a baby, and she hasn't come good yet. I'm get, I always assume that Serena's going to... Every time she's in the draw, no matter what her state is, I've always said she's going to win. Um, but she lost last year's Wimbledon. She lost last year's U.S. Open. She lost at the Australian, having match points in the quarters to Pliskova. She lost it in the Wimbledon final to Halep. Cause I'm just going to keep picking her. This is the I'm year, I believe, going to, to return. Picking Serena until she gets to 24, until she ties uh, Margaret Court's Grand Slam record and goes beyond. I just, I want to see it. You know, we've had this storyline for a long while now. I would very much like to see Serena get there. Well, there you see it. You become a friend of Carrillo. You're a friend for life. Mary, <laughs> for sure. always thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, my friend. Thank you. Tennis fans, great to have you with us on Inside Tennis with the Cause. Hi, everybody. I'm Mary Carrillo, and you're Inside Tennis with the Cause, the legend.